at test instruments. So this is in the uh, fault diagnostic and rectification. It's in the fault finding uh, unit. But test instruments, the information here is, is useful for everything. It's the same test instruments that we would use inspection and testing. Um, so, but it, it's in this unit, but it will, we will cover it variously. So the first thing we're gonna look at is a voltage indicator. So always work from the highest possible range downwards. So what that means is, what you don't want to do is, if you're doing a voltage indicator, you know, if you use a tester that only goes up to 230, and for some reason it's a, a three-phase system or some error has occurred, you know, you don't want to put a tester that isn't at the right voltage. So always go above because you can always move down. So always go for the highest range possible and work your way downwards. It's unlikely that a voltage above 1,000 volts AC will be encountered by most electricians on a normal installation. So you'll normally come across free phase or single phase. There may be 11 kV on the supply side of transport transformers or heavy industry supplies, industrial supplies. But you'll know about that, and that's a different thing that you'll look at at the time. A voltage indicator that will work on AC and DC to GS38 should be approved. And we've looked at GS38 um, in the previous unit, and you've got GS38 to look at and goes through the finger guards and the tips. Always make an approved voltage indicator has a range above the supply voltage, as we've said. Make sure the indicator is proven before and after use, knowing using a known supply or proving unit. So we've all looked at proving units um, when we've done safe isolation and you've all gone through the safe isolation procedure. So you make sure your tester is working before and you make sure your tester is working afterwards. Multimeters should not be used for main supply as most of them do not have a short circuit protection and it's very easy to leave the meter on the wrong setting. So we strongly um, recommend that you don't use a multimeter. Make sure there's adequate access to the test area and it's well lit. Make sure you can apply the test probes to the terminals without the risk of shorting out the terminals to each other or to earth. So just make sure you've got plenty of space to work at and you can access it freely. Once the measurement has been taken, record the values obtained. Finally, isolate the test point and replace the covers. So we've got a list here of all the test instruments that we could use on typical faults. So a loss of supply and low voltage, we would use an approved voltage indicator. Overload, we would use a clamp meter, similar to the clamp meter that we used when we did the science and we were looking at the transformer task. So where there's a clamp meter we use there. Open circuit, we would look for a low resistance ohm meter and short circuit, we would look at insulation resistance tester. Also, we would look at an insulation resistor for high resistance faults. Faulty components depend on the component type, what we'd look at. A burned contact, we would look at low resistance ohm meter and a visual check, and the same as a transformer. An intermittent fault, um, going from my own experience, an intermittent fault are very difficult to find. Um, so you'd want to make sure that, because sometimes the fault's not always there. So a visual inspection, low resistance ohm meter and an insulation resistance. Nuisance tripping or tripping of an RCD would be an RCD tester. Fault, um, a failure of a circuit breaker to trip on earth fault would be an earth loop impedance tester. Incorrect two-way lighting would be a visual and a low ohm. So you'd check to make sure that the connectors in the light place tightened and then you'd use a low range ohm meter. Excessive volt drop, we could use a voltmeter. And phase rotation would be a phase rotation indicator. Trying to get out the bloody thing. Ugh. I want to stop recording and I might have to edit that afterwards.